Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Eun Sun. Tonight, I wanted to talk about something uh, that's known as uh, subjects for contemplation. Some people chant them every day to themselves. Some people do it while they're meditating. Uh, and maybe you don't know what they are at all. So I'm going to tell you what they are. I'm subject to aging. I have not gone beyond aging. I'm subject to illness. I have not gone beyond illness. I'm subject to death. I have not gone beyond death. I am subject to change, separate from, separate from all that is dear and appealing to me. I'm the owner of my actions, heir to my actions, born of my actions, related through my actions, and have my actions as my arbitrator. Whatever I do, for good or evil, to that I will fall heir. The five remembrances, going back to the uh, Pali Canon. Been around for a while, and some people, like I said, chant them as part of their meditation. Uh, some people might uh, just, you know, remember it throughout the day or once a day or whenever. <clears throat> But what would a Zen approach to these subjects for contemplation be? We don't typically contemplate or meditate on a lot of things that involve I, right? There's not a lot of I in Zen. You can't spell Zen with an I, as the saying could have gone. Um, so we could change it to, we are subject to aging, we have not gone beyond aging, and put it in the, in the plural sense, where all the other sentient beings are, are part of these contemplations also. And that would be one approach. However, I think there might even be uh, a more Zen approach to the subjects for contemplation. Everything is changing, 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 right? This is the baseline of our practice. No self, impermanence, discomfort, dis-ease. That's, that's just the bottom line. Those are things from which everything else springs. So the fact that things are going to change, that's a given, right? We, we know that, we understand that. All we have to do is pay a modicum of attention and we see that that's the case. We can get all philosophical and say, I'm not the same person now that I was five seconds ago or that I will be in the future and why bother? Everything is always changing, 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 period. End of story. You don't have to put some sort of arbitrary time frame on it or try and uh, delineate what a moment is, for example. So I'm subject to aging. That's what happens as time passes, right? I mean, I look back at, 
I don't know, some pictures of when I first ordained and I don't feel like I'm a different guy from then, but I sure as hell know I looked a little different than I did then. There is actually somebody sitting with us this evening who has actually seen me in all three dimensions, height, width, and depth. And she'll be able to attest the fact that, yeah, you've done a little bit of aging in the, I don't know, eight years or however long it's been since we actually met in person as a sangha. Illness, we've been in a plague for three years. We pretty much have illness covered. We know it's there. It's hanging over us like the proverbial sword of Damocles sometimes. But it's there. We haven't gone beyond it. As many times as we'd like to think so because we've been vaccinated X number of times and wear our masks and do everything right and wash our hands, you know, sometimes that damn little virus is just going to sneak through one of those little cracks and next thing you know, you're on your back for five days. Subject to death. Well, you may not always age as much as another and you may not get sick as much as another, but whether sickness or aging is the result of death or not, there's going to be death. Another given. We're going to be separated from things we like and we're going to be put in contact with things we don't like. And yeah, that's just the way it is. But the reason that there's things that we don't like that maybe we used to like and things that we didn't like but now we do like is, again, because of impermanence. Changing, 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 changing. What seems like a good idea today, uh, it may turn out not to be such a good idea tomorrow. Um... Heir to my actions. Some people talk of it as cause and effect. Um, personally, I like the translation of karma as just action. One action happens, another action is going to follow. If I step off a curb in front of a bus, there's going to be a, some action. If I drink like a fish, get into a car, and lose my license, there's some actions. If I pick up a baby who's crying and it stops crying, there's another action. Sung San would also often talk in terms of situation, relationship, and function. And that has to do with, with karma. And changing, changing, changing. So when you're with one person and their baby is crying and you don't know who they are, you may be wouldn't just like snatch the kid up and start like this. It might not be the right function to do in that situation. Then again, if it's your own kid, you know, that would be hopefully the correct situation and the correct function. But where does the Zen approach to all this come into play? A 
Who's subject to aging? What is it that's subject to illness? Who is this I that's subject to death? What is it that's changing? What is it that's separate from everything else and in contact with everything else? And who is it that's the owner of the actions? What is this? The roi du, du jour, as it were. What is this that's subject to aging, death, change, illness, and karma? What is it? There are those who say that contemplating death especially without the guidance of a teacher or someone else to work with might get a little heavy. Some people maybe not do so well with that sort of thing. But we can ask, what is it that's subject to death? Who is it? Who is this I that's subject to illness and aging? What is it that is the heir to karma? When we do our uh, repentance, full moon ceremony, which sometimes we remember to do. Sometimes we actually sit on a, uh, on a full moon. One of the lines in that says that basically our karma is empty. So what is it that's experiencing this emptiness? from our karma. Who is it that inherits? Who is it that reaps the benefits, the rewards, or the negative outcome of this thing that's empty to begin with? Those negative outcomes, positive outcomes, all of that, Emptiness. What is it that is experiencing the emptiness? What is this? What is subject to aging, illness, death, change, and karma? What is it?